Welcome to Explore and Repeat. My name is Ethan and I'm Ben. I'm from England and I'm cycling the Mediterra Mediterranean coast of Europe. How long have you been doing that for? Two months. Right, yeah. And I think I've got about four months left to go. Yeah, have you been taking any uh, forms of transportation? Uh, no, just all bike. Um, for me it helps just to uh, think of each day as a separate thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about four months, it's a long time mm. to, to want to be doing something. Think of that day and worry about that day only. Taking it just day by day, one at a time. I think when I started off I had this image of uh, the goal, mm -hmm. the destination. And, but it's actually a thing in between that's uh, the most important when yeah. I come to learn from doing this. Yeah. I like to get as far as Istanbul. Wait, where did you start? I started in Gibraltar. Gibraltar to me uh, marks the start of the Mediterranean. Okay. So, so you've got the Gibraltar Strait mm -hmm. between uh, mainland Spain and uh, Morocco. Mm -hmm. And from there on in, as you carry on east, it's just Mediterranean. So why Istanbul? Starting in Gibraltar, going to Turkey, Istanbul. This is my first big adventure. I tend to have this idea that you want to go and do something more exotic. As a European myself, I have little knowledge of what's in my own backyard, so to speak. <laughs> so I just thought, like, as a first thing, I'd like to get to know my home. First, Istanbul pretty much marks the end of Europe. The idea of Istanbul is uh, it keeps things sort of open-ended. Mm -hmm. So obviously, despite finishing the trip, you kind of start a new chapter, maybe, and kind of leads on to something else afterwards. For me, it's a, a natural finish. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, It'd be nice to see the contrast between Istanbul, Turkey, and the, the rest of Europe. So mm, yeah. See what see what it, the fuss is about. Southern Southern Europe, there's definitely a more uh, relaxed atmosphere mm. than back home. People were seem quite busy back home. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess career orientated. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it's just um, when you're out here, you can do what you can do. It's nice to relax. Now, your end point is Istanbul, mm -hmm. uh, and you've given yourself about how much time to do all that? I think about four to five months. Okay. Is that what you have left or total? That's what I have left. Left, okay. Yeah. Now, when you finally reach Istanbul, mm -hmm. all right, do you have any sort of special thing that you, like, are you planting a flag in the ground? Mm -hmm. Are you going to celebrate somehow? Is there, or is it going to be very. I quite like a picture in front of the mosque. <laughs> Just uh, now, um, you're doing this completely solo, nice. doing it all on your own. You're completely self-contained. You on your bike. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Have you been enjoying traveling alone? Uh, yes. It's not been such a lonely experience mm -hmm. as people might think. Yeah. Because um, you always have, you always meet people on the road. Mm -hmm. Quite eccentric people sometimes. People always are very inquisitive. French, right, love it. <laughs> they love talking to you. And uh, being, being alone, uh, as opposed to a group of people where you can always rely on each other mm -hmm. to help out, opens you up more, I think, to um, strangers. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a stranger might see a group, I think, you know, oh, uh, they're fine, they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. just leading to it. And it's kind of like, I guess it's, that's like with life anyway. Like, uh, we, it, even in a crowded environment, you're only ever like with a certain group of people mm -hmm. at one time. Mm -hmm. You're never ever going to interact with everyone despite it being a public place. Right, know? right. Civil inattention. Mm, yeah. Uh, Travelling in a group as well, it's a special thing as well because being in a group you have to learn to make compromises for each other. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not one person's uh, ideas, uh, collective, mm -hmm. collective. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. But 
I guess at least with when you're traveling solo, everything's on your own terms. Mm. No um, compromising. <laughs> I'd, I do. I would like uh, the opportunity at some point to do something like this, but with someone else. Hmm. Um, so I think that I think it's harder to work uh, in a group, mm. but equally, if not more, rewarding. Mm, okay. Yeah. Do you ever find it hard by yourself to stay motivated? Uh, do you ever have moments where you you have to kind of kick yourself in the ass, so to speak? Only in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> I think once I've had a a coffee, I'm alright. Coffee and a croissant. The thing you got to remember, the revelation I made, the point the point is you're cycling like across the Mediterranean coast. There's no there's no like right or wrong way of doing things. The only limitation is just uh, set by yourself. When I'm have when I feel like I don't want to carry on. It does help to just like treat yourself once in a while. I've had to resort to uh, using hotels, and I don't really like having to pay out for because it means that there's less there's less time on the road. I did quite like enjoying feeling normal again for a brief period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I guess there's like limitations, especially in Italy, because. Everywhere that is very busy, because I've been going down the coast, it's been very busy. There is like, there's no rule book to say what you kind of can't do. Right. You set your own rules, so to speak. You have to kind of manage your expectations. Europe is a very populated area. Mm -hmm. If you go to places like South America, for example, mm -hmm. you know, you can expect to maybe like every two days you come across a village or something. There are like ample like options for like wild camping and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not kind of frowned upon too much either. Mm. Whereas here you have to be very selective about where you choose to camp. Mm -hmm. Technically it's illegal but it's you gotta kinda of use your discretion. Right? piss people off. <laughs> As I say, manage your expectations. Yeah. Everyone everyone lives modern lifestyle now. Yeah. It it's, it's inevitable. Not to say that you can, can't enjoy it. If you're down, if you feel down and out, just a, an extra cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it works for me at least. Um, mm. Do you have a certain food that uh, you use as a recovery food? Because you're expending so much energy, you're, you know, your muscles, you, you had that issue with your Achilles. Do you have any? Anything? I, uh, when I start my day, I usually have like a, um, a sort of a pastry or something, coffee, pastry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> much when I finish my day, I usually have something quite big to eat. Again, I'm looking for everything, filling it with like ham and cheese. Mm -hmm. I have just a small alcohol, so mm -hmm. that's sufficient for a lot of things. But you're not going to make like, you know, Three course meal out of it, you know. It's so good <laughs> right now. Yeah. Do you miss curry? Uh, um, yeah. 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 I haven't seen a lot of that around. I miss curry, I miss um, Chinese. I don't know if I miss British food, I don't know. But, um, that brings up but I will be there when I get back, you know. Yes, exactly, yeah. If anything, the, this experience will make that richer when we get back. Yeah, because I went home briefly for Christmas. I got I got a month out of it at the beginning, but then I went back home. Mm -hmm. But going back home was difficult because my mindset was still in yeah travel mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, picking up the kind of daily routines and the, the kind of sound bites that people say in the first place just come back instantly. Yeah, and nothing's yeah. changed for when I returned four months later. Yeah. I, can, I can bet that nothing's changed again, you know? Is this going to be the longest you've stayed out of the UK this period of time? Um, yes. I think your, your, your expectations are spot on. Yeah. And then nothing, nothing really changes. It's yeah. both sad and comforting at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong, like, I, I 
do look forward to going back home. Um, but I just only hope that um, there is something to take away from everything that I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I just hope it's like a precursor to bigger things. Right. Um, a little bit of uh, cycling and touring in the past. You did. You said you did a bit in France. Yeah. Uh, and you've done some bit local things, but this is the longest trip you've planned and are undertaking to date. Uh, yes. Alright. Okay. Um, why? Did you, did you have a tendency to, like in the UK, this is the way I'm going to pack my bags, and then you got on the road and you totally rejiggered it. Did you have anything that's changed the most from your original plan to how you pack now, or did you have that all sorted out before you left? Um, the great thing nowadays is there's so much material in which to learn mm. and that it's all been done before and it just makes it a lot easier now for first timers to, to get it right first yeah. time. One guy I re read a lot um, before I started, his name is Tom Allen and he made a film out of his journey. It was originally going to be um, like around the world trip mm -hmm. and it was like sponsored and everything. Mm -hmm. Like companies were like giving, donating gear. Wow, all this awesome. sort of stuff. He was going to, he had a schedule, they had to meet mm -hmm. to yeah. go around and basically he met a girl <laughs> and that changed everything. It's always a girl. And I recommend you to watch it because it's it's the whole idea of like you setting yourself uh, setting yourself too high an expectation. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of like it has to be adventurous, self sufficient. Mm -hmm. And if it's anything other than that, it's like it feels like a it feels like a failure. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like he's cheating. Yeah. Yeah. These are the mistakes he's made. Mm -hmm. He's gone out his way to teach. Uh, others, it's okay to make mistakes. It's how you know. It's how we learn it's to to teach to not make mistakes. is dangerous. It's by making mistakes that we learn. Right. It's how we make the connections in our brain. You know? It also raises the tension of each individual decision. Instead of it, if you leave it open to being able to make a mistake. Mm. Right? You don't have to be so stressed out about each individual mistake. You can yeah. just take it, and just take it as it is, and leave it behind. It's one of my issues. It's a weird day and age, isn't it, when people are told to watch out for potential mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's, it's... Yeah, we had a friend uh, back in the States. It sort of gave us a great ethos. That our friend said, no, don't go into it with low expectations. He said, go into it with no expectations. Uh, thank you, Glenn Brown. <laughs> and go into the situations with no expectations. You just take, you're trying to take it as it is. And it, seems, it seems like contradictory, contradictory, that no expectations is like, so why would you do something in the first mm -hmm. place, you know? But it's true, like if you you, you, you just kind of open yourself up more. Yeah. Thank curious. you very much for uh, talking with us uh, here on Explore, Eat, Repeat. Um, don't forget you can check out uh, other videos and images um, online. Uh, if you're thinking of doing something similar, there, as I say, there's lots, so much material out there. I, rec I recommend, uh, again, Tom Allen and a guy called Alistair Humphreys, and then it's just a great starting point. Um, and uh, we'll all be waiting for that picture from Istanbul in front of the mosque. Uh, eagerly. We've got to manage your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. your time. Uh, don't forget to like and share down below, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.